OK, now BBC News. In the wake of the worst flooding to hit parts of Wales in 40 years, families and communities in the South Wales valleys are struggling to get their lives back together after homes and businesses were left devastated. BBC Wales Investigates asks, what price will we all have to pay to protect ourselves from extreme weather events in future? And who's going to pick up the bill? This was the morning after Storm Dennis hit the South Wales Valleys. In one of the worst hit areas, scenes like this hadn't been seen for 60 years. The only thing I've managed to save is his medals from the wall. Ruined everything. I've lost everything. On the day he was meant to be celebrating his birthday, Gordon Matthews had to be rescued. We had plans, we had birthday cake and everything here for him to celebrate his 96th birthday with the family and his own, well, his cake was floating around the kitchen. They live on the main road, parallel to the River Taff, which had burst its banks. The front road was full of water. We came down and my dad was asleep. He sleeps downstairs because he likes mooching around in the nights. And the water was already pouring into there. And with that, it all started coming through the back door. And within 10 minutes, the whole house was full of four feet of water. It happened so quick, it was incredible. His grandsons, who were staying the night, carried him upstairs. Baywatch team have arrived. <laughs> the speed of the water that was running down our road, it was terrifying. Well, my dad now, he's just total shock, really. He doesn't really understand the damage that's been done to the property. Outside, the community has rallied. Inside, Gordon's daughters have tried to salvage his most precious possessions. We managed to save this one of my sister. That's his marriage certificate to my mum. It's gone. That's his mother's Bible that he kept, and his mother was born in 18 something. But that's all that's left of that, and it, that was in perfect condition. And he had little trinkets in here as well. Look, the, I think that was a flower off um, one of her funeral. We're coming across things that even we didn't know he had. Do you know what I mean? But we know he's kept it because it all means something to him. So I don't know what it's going to do to him when he realises what's gone. For now, Gordon has to live with relatives until the house is ready. Around the corner, there's little to be kept at another couple's home. They had to save their daughter and her boyfriend from this annex in the garden. They woke around the same kind of time, um, realising that there was water petrified, not knowing what to do, realising they had to get out as soon as they could, but the water level was rising so quickly, um, they had to push the doors open against the water. By the time they got from the shed to, to the house, it's waist height, and then Anton's trying to get to them and open this door to get them in and get them safe. If she was here by herself, she might have drowned. She wouldn't have been able to open the doors, and the, and the water was li literally up till here, or about there. I'm surprised that you know everybody survived, because that water came in so quick, and a lot of people were surprised so quickly that you know people could have drowned.
Lives have been turned upside down in communities like this. The human cost is clear, but it could cost hundreds of millions of pounds to clear up and repair the damage to homes, businesses and infrastructure. But there were warnings that this wasn't going to be a one-off. This is the shape of things to come. So just how prepared are we? Recent rainfall levels have been described as unprecedented. In one week, we were lashed by two storms, breaking all previous records. But why was this area so badly affected? When we get heavy rainfall events, basically it runs off those valley sides very quickly into the rivers. So you get a rapid response, an instant response almost with river levels. So the flooding happens very quickly after the rainfall events. Professor Liz Bentley is a meteorologist and she's been studying how weather patterns have been dramatically changing. We're seeing climate change. A one degree warming over the last 100 years or so has seen a 7% increase in rainfall. And that will continue as, as temperatures uh, continue to rise. So we're seeing more rain, more heavier rainfall events, build the topography in and the, the steepness of the valleys. You're only going to see inevitably more extreme flooding. South Wales is one of the worst affected areas in the UK as Storm Dennis continues to bring heavy rain and strong winds. Two severe flood warnings are in place, which means there's a danger to life at Pont de Prix and Aberdellis near Neath. That red alert prompted warning messages to householders who'd signed up to receive texts from Natural Resources Wales' floodline system. But in parts of Nant Garu, Something went wrong. We didn't have any warning. Jesus, Jones. Like, we're all registered with Floodline. No text message come out to let us know. You know, if they knew this was going to happen, we could, and we knew, we could have sort of, like, gone, well, we could upstairs and maybe, you know, salvage some stuff. Susan Fraser lives on the street with other members of her family. My mum phoned me about half past four in the morning and she went through the streets starting to flood. I was like, shut up, no way. <laughs> I turned my landing light on, I looked down the stairs and my settee was floating at the bottom of the stairs. I was just like, oh my God. Next door, her sister Tanya, her husband Phil and their seven-year-old son were also hit. Yeah. So what are you doing in there now? Uh, cleaning the kitchen, so we're mopping all the floor out now. The freezer, oh my god, you should see that. It's, oh, yeah. All my food is ruined and that. Absolutely awful. I'm devastated, I am. Absolutely dev. I just, I don't know where to start, I don't know. It's hard to do. Like others we've met, the couple weren't insured against flooding. Two years ago, we took a £25,000 loan out to, to refurbish the whole house because it needed it. Got it to where we wanted it to, was, you know, for our son. And now we, we were in three foot of water one night ago and potentially up to another 25000 trying to do, do it all up again. Throughout Ron the Conantav, millions have been spent on reducing the risk of flooding. But there's anger that the flood warnings didn't reach everyone. I don't think the warning system is worked adequately. Um, a lot of people, because it was the middle of the night, they weren't made away. Um, Who do you blame for that? Well, it's, it, the warning systems and natural resources worlds. I want a review of the warning system, and certainly in the Kind of Taft, my view is if NRW doesn't change the way the warnings are issued, we will look to do something ourselves. Residents came very close in some cases. They could have lost their lives. Natural Resources Wales has been monitoring the recent storms. This shows the rainfall through Storm Dennis. Andy so Wall is, is their flood risk manager. And then what made the real difference and caused the severe flooding is this second pulse of rain on Sunday overnight. Would you agree that the early warning system hasn't worked in some places? 
It's too early to say. We need to look into that. What we need to do as part of the post event, we'll look at what when we issued the warnings. We'll go out on site, talk to residents. We'll be able to assess when flooding actually happened. The one thing we'll see in the South Wales Valley is things can happen very quickly. We issued 89 flood warnings during this event, and in total, the numbers of text, emails, and voicemails is over 100,000. So the ones that you've sent. Yes. Out. So lots of messages have gone out. A few days after our interview, NRW said that flood warnings were issued, but admitted some were later than they would have wished. And in this village near Pontypridd, one of the council's own alert systems appears to have failed. So you can see where the water line kind of came up to, and then everything on the lower units all the way round is completely gone. Rachel and her partner have lived here for just over a year. Their home backs onto a tributary of the River Taff. It's come over from the culvert over here and hit the house. So yeah, we've lost everything down here, everything. They thought they'd be safe because of the flood defence wall behind their home and the siren which is meant to warn them if there's flooding. We had no prior warning of this, our warning was our next door neighbour knocking our door and saying, you've been flooded. And that was it, unfortunately. The whole row was hit. This is the water line, it's obviously it's all receding now, but when I came down here, that's where the water was holding, that's where it was, that's how high it was. It's five foot easy, isn't it? It's just the fact that you can't do nothing. You've just got to go up out of the way there and leave it. Mark's dog was trapped downstairs and died before they could save her. I'm devastated. I'm terrible. I've slept for two days. It rains it coming down and I'm afraid to go sleep, knowing that it can't do no more damage now because it's all done. But I'm still trying hard to go sleep, you know? Residents wanted to know why the siren hadn't worked. I'm not saying the alarm system has been a good thing, because I think it has to a certain extent, but it can't fail us like that. RCT Council told us it did inspect and clear the culvert the day before the storm, but the alert system was overwhelmed by the unprecedented weather for a short time in the early hours. Storm Dennis didn't just bring flooding to the valleys. Whoa. Oh, my. This footage of a landslide went viral. Around 30,000 tonnes of colliery waste and soil slid down the mountain. And since the storms, more slips have appeared. There are more than 1,200 disused tips across Wales, the majority in the South Wales Valleys. It's where geologist Dr Peter Brabham was brought up. This is one of the most heavily mined areas in the world. There's something like 65 recorded coal mines in this area, and obviously the coal mines dumped colliery waste indiscriminately around the valley sides. Post Aberfan, a lot of these tips have been dealt with, but there are one or two legacy tips still left lying around the valley sides. I mean, thankfully, this one, there were no houses or anything below the tip, and it's basically just come down into the river. What warning signals does this send out to us? Well, with these heavy rainstorm events, then tips which we deemed to be stable 10 years ago, we have to factor in now much heavier rainfall and we have to reevaluate. The, uh, the stability of the tip and see what we can do about uh, draining the tip, for example, is the primary factor involved here. On that point, we're going to have to go, I think. There's been another slip at Kledach Vale. News breaks of another landslip a few miles down the valley. It's behind the council's headquarters and staff had been evacuated. The council leader was at the scene. There's been a small landslip that appears on the mountain behind the council offices. Uh, one of many we've had across the county over the last few days. So as a precaution, we've moved staff from one side of the site to the other while engineers assess whether or there's a risk of further movement. But this is fairly minor, but we do have a number of these now across the county. In 1981, the South Wales coalfield was mapped out by the British Geological Survey. 
If new land slips are verified, it's updated. But Dr Brabham says it's time for another full survey. Now is the time to definitely re-evaluate where we are and uh, using new technology that's uh, like laser surveying and uh, do a re-evaluation of the valleys and identify these old tips and uh, evaluate them all one by one. The council has inspected 43 tips since the storm and is monitoring this one around the clock. But it's not just homes at risk from Storm Dennis. It took just a few hours to cause three and a half million pounds worth of damage to this car showroom in Treforest. More than 250 vehicles were wrecked. It's one of around 500 businesses across the county to have been affected. This was the main shopping street the morning after it flooded. The water's now gone down, but the aftermath is still being felt in this town. And that means that livelihoods and jobs are at serious risk. When we came in, it was total devastation. We've got riser recliner chairs, sofas, beds, heavy furniture, all, all over the place. And as you can probably see, it's roughly about four to five feet high, and that's throughout the building. Floor warping, it's utter devastation. Have you been able to estimate yet how much stock you've lost and what the damage is, the cost? We've done a recent stock take, and we're, we've lost roughly about £80,000 in stock. Now, the obvious question is, what about insurance? Insurance was due for renewal recently. The flood cover was removed by the insurance company, so we've had to take, we've had to renew with no flood cover. I'm not sleeping right at the moment. There's a lot of stress, there's a lot of worry. I've spent two years building up from nothing. There was nothing in here. It's a new business and it's, it's all gone. I'm, I'm gutted, I'm devastated. RCT Council is giving flooded businesses £1,000 each to help them get back on their feet. The Welsh Government has promised £10 million towards emergency help, but it's nowhere near enough. Add up all the costs of the destruction in RCT and it's likely to run to hundreds of millions of pounds. A few days after the flooding and things are worse than Tanya first thought. We've been told that because of the contamination of um, the furniture, we have to get rid of all our furniture. We've had to take up all the flooring. My, all my furniture in there have, have just got to go. All my chairs, my, my settee, you know, everything I've worked hard for. Myself and my husband, you know, we both work. I'm just heartbroken. Absolutely heartbroken. Just, just trying to make it safe now for my, my boy to come home. I can't imagine what he'll think coming into no telly, you know, no furniture to sit on. So. The council has given £500 to every home hit by flooding and an extra £500 for those not insured. While money helps with practicalities, for families like Sarah and Anton's, it's the psychological damage that's hard to repair. Sunday night, it was raining and stormy and windy, and our daughters were too scared to go to sleep. Mum, what's it, what if it happens again? What if the floods come back? And what are we going to do? And she had a panic attack in the shower yesterday because of the water. Mm -hmm. So she's going to need some help. Okay. We will be okay. Yeah, we will. Won't we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Carolyn is taking a call from the insurers. Yes, she and her dad, Gordon, still can't move back home. I don't want to go into a, into a hotel. And where, where are these hotels? Well, I do have to because I've got nowhere to stay. Well, basically, what they're saying is that they can put us into a hotel, but it's seven miles away, which isn't any good to me whatsoever, 
because Dad got all his appointments, his hospital appointments. I'm left with nothing, no vehicle, anything to take him anywhere. So I've asked for a caravan now in the garden. I just can't go miles away I know, from you. Cat, I can't I know, do it. I know. And it's the dog as well, little Paddy. It's all my family, my grandchildren. I won't be able to see any of them. And it's not good for Dad, is it? Because the upheaval he's had already has made him ill. He's not happy, so... I've been telling my dad all week, won't be long now, Dad, a couple more days and you'll be in. You can be walking around upstairs. He was happy with that. And i got to go home now and tell him, no, that's not happening. We're homeless again, 96 years of age and homeless. These are the consequences of extreme rainfall. Last weekend saw the third storm to bring flooding in a fortnight. So is Wales about to get even wetter? The flooding that we've seen is a taster of, of what's to come. These used to be maybe one in a hundred year events, one in a generation events. Now they're happening probably once every five years. They're happening on a much more frequent basis. And that frequency will probably continue to increase as we go forward in time. But governments were warned to be prepared for the worst in a report on climate change four years ago. We saw the flooding event at the end of 2015 and this report talks about generally uh, rainfall, extreme rainfall events could be 20 to 30 percent above what we saw in those, in those extreme flooding events. But you take the topographical effects here in South Wales, the steep valley sides, all of that rainfall coming down the valleys, you can probably add another 10 or 20 percent on top of that, particularly when you're thinking about flooding levels. So that's an increase of perhaps 40% over what we were seeing back in 14, 2015. That's right. So you're talking about nearly, you know, 40 to 50% increase in the amount of water that's coming down these valleys into, into these river flows compared to what we saw during some extreme rainfall events at the end of 2015. That, that should ring a lot of alarm bells in political circles, shouldn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the evidence is here. We're seeing it here and now. Not just the report was talking about what might happen in the future. We're seeing it playing out in reality. In 2016, the Westminster government indicated it would respond to this report with increased funding. So what happened in Wales? Environment Minister Leslie Griffiths has seen the damage caused by the heavy rain for herself. What did you do, given that report in 2016 about higher than expected rainfall? Well, I can only uh, talk about the schemes that we've got in place now and the ones that are in the pipeline. We have made it a priority. We've declared a climate emergency. It's really, it, it's really important that everybody recognises that these sorts of events are going to get more frequent because of the impact of climate change. The landslip we saw in Tylerstown hadn't been predicted. The last major survey was in the 1980s. Isn't it about time, given what happened, given the increasing rainfall, we had another urgent major survey? Well, the First Minister met with the Secretary of State for Wales on Monday, where this was discussed. I wasn't at the meeting, unfortunately. Um, but obviously, this is something that is having a priority at the moment. The warnings were there about increased weather patterns, about more regular rainfall. Have we been a bit too complacent? No, we, we've, we've spent a great deal of money and prioritised mitigations and we will continue to fund alleviate flood alleviation schemes. We will continue to ensure we have them in the pipeline. We need to get them out as quickly as possible. And also when we've got our strategy in place by the probably about spring of this year, we'll be able to look and make sure that our investment is in the correct places. But those hardest hit by the floods want action, not words. Families like the Comdos face months of uncertainty as they try to rebuild their lives and their homes. <laughs> Tanya's son Alfie is finally home. He was shocked. As soon as he walked through the door, he was like, OK. And then he said, Mum, is this how you've been living? And I was like, it was a lot worse than what you could see now. 
Until their house dries out, they're living upstairs and going to Tanya's mum's for meals. <laughs> Susan's insurers have given her a caravan while her house is being repaired. So this is my new home <laughs> for the least of the next six months anyway, so... You need to be positive because it's only going to bring you down otherwise. And I always think there's always somebody in a worse position than what I'm in. You know, I've got a home. I know I can go back to it. I've got my family. We're just thankful we got each other anyway, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for Gordon, who had to be carried out of his street, a temporary home in the garden may be his only option too. His daughters aren't sure that he'll cope. He's um, still very much in shock. He's asking for his books and his cassettes. And of course, they're all the wind they're gone, and I haven't got the heart to tell him that. I don't know whether he'll actually get over this when he realises what's gone from that room. At his age now, and he's frail, I just think he'll give up because he's, he's just lost his, his little world of treasures in there. And I can't see him getting over it. The community may have weathered this storm for now, but as new ones appear on the horizon, it's clear there has to be change if we're to prevent further misery. <laughs>